Hello, thanks for joining me again everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to replace or add a new electrical outlet. And uh, this is going to be a, a 101 course on, on what to do and what not to do. Uh, if you're an electrician, you might want to bypass this video, but if you're a general homeowner, this might be very helpful for you. I also have a playlist with additional videos that are along the same lines that you might be interested in. How to replace a light switch, basic electrical, uh, 101 type of uh, understanding so you, you know why certain wires are are needed and what they do and how it all ties into your electrical panel so you understand how and when not to get shocked you know all kinds of things like that a wire stripper video that you might be interested in just a lot of basic electrical understanding videos that I think you might find interesting so anyway let's get to the workbench and we'll show you how to wire an electrical outlet one more thing before we uh, get to that workbench remember to turn your breaker off and you can test it by using one of these testers you plug it into the outlet uh, get a small lamp that you know that works and also you can plug that in to see if it's your outlets uh, on or off and there's also a circuit detector which I did a video on like a hundred years ago that you could use but make sure your power is off to your outlet before you touch it we are here at the workbench and I just want to uh, show you the basics of uh, an electrical outlet and a lot of people don't understand what all these different screws mean and if one is different than the other so again this is the basic uh, 101 type video I want to take you through it so what you're gonna have is uh, on one end uh, you're gonna have your your hot side and you're gonna have your neutral side and in some instances the outlet will uh, delineate the difference between two different color screws here on the sides but uh, the reality is is what you should be looking at is uh, it's labeled underneath now this is black and it's really hard to see it but if I can bring it close enough and maybe when I uh, edit this video you might see it says hot here okay and then on the back side it says white okay so now when you have your electrical wires uh, your black is your hot and your white is your neutral okay so um, and then also on the outlet you've got this screw here the green is always going to be your ground okay so those are the basics there you also have some uh, spots in the back where you can instead of uh, bending over or, or uh, curling j-hooking the wire around the screw you can put a, a straight piece through the back through the hole I'm not a fan of using that I've had them pop out on me at times which meant that the outlet wasn't really working properly as it relates to this uh, push-in type so uh, once I had one pop out on me once or twice I kinda stopped using that little hole uh, spot on the back that's just my own personal preference anyway okay so hopefully you get the difference here the hot and the neutral white and also the ground the hot again is the black and always look for the labeling on the underside it'll definitely tell you hot or neutral white so we're actually gonna wire one of these up into an electrical box in just a moment but I just want to show you a couple of uh, basic things that are important to know or and some things that you don't want to do that could uh, help uh, help you with your installation and uh, prevent some issues in the in the future so the first thing is is that each one of these outlets has a strip gauge on them right so for example um, you know this one here has got a has got a gauge right here this one here has a strip gauge right in this spot here Okay, so it tells you to lay the wire into here and strip it up to that point. In this case here, it's saying to, to run it right up to this spot. I got it marked here by my thumb. And then you can put your wire strippers in here. This is a 14 gauge wire. I've got it set at 14. Then we can strip it. Okay, so that should be enough to make your little J-hook if you're using the screws
there you go okay all right the other important reason why you want to use that strip gauge you don't want to leave it short because it you, it's the most important thing here is to make sure that the uh, the screw is is biting down on wire and not on insulation I've got one here that is not done right so I can show you okay so this one here the insulation was not uh, stripped back far enough and you have the screw pinching down on the insulation which means inside right beneath in here there's gonna be a little gap where you could have a little bit of an arc between the wire and the screw not making a complete connection it could possibly get loose at times in the future which would cause it could be a fire hazard you can get some flickering look it's even moving right now so this is not this is not what you want again because this one was not stripped properly and then you could have a situation where it's stripped too much and then you have too much of the uh, the wire exposed out right so you really only want the wire coming down right up to the plastic and and not much farther than that it's really a delicate balance but you'll understand once you strip the wire the first time and you make a perfect J hook you'll see what I'm talking about now we have another kind of um, electrical out here this is called a back and side wire outlet okay so meaning you know what we just showed you is a side wire like this okay where it comes around from the side now this also is, can be wired through the back and let me see if you can see this here but you've got a little um, piece that slips back and forth here where it can trap the wire okay so what you can do is um, it's got a different strip gauge you strip it a little shorter okay and then you can actually slide the wire in from the back like this and then tighten it down here it's actually a little bit too long now I like this better than punching it through the hole in the back the other thing this is good for is um, if you ha are replacing an existing outlet and you don't have a lot of room to strip the wire or to bend because you've got short wires coming out of the box and there's no room to pull any more through okay I'm gonna make sure we're not pinching insulation and we're not okay it's just perfect here tighten it down and this isn't going anywhere it's moving slightly I want to tighten it just a little bit more okay again this is called a back and side wire outlet so when it comes to your ground you're always gonna J hook it around here tighten it down okay and this ground is going to tie into uh, any of the other ground wires in the outlet can be connected together here the other thing I wanted to mention which I probably should have said a lot earlier is you always put your j-hook facing to the right because you're you're turning your screw clockwise and you want it to face to the right okay that way when it spins it's tightening down on it if you have it facing to the left and you were to you were to tighten it let's try to get this on here and I can show you what I'm talking about maybe this one okay if you were to have it the hook going to the left and you were tightening to the right what naturally what will happen is this thing will start to push the wire out that way loosening it which you don't want the other thing is this when you when you're tightening let me let me put this the right way I don't want you guys getting the wrong idea okay so when you tighten this down you want to be pulling the wire up against the screw post right you don't want it sitting out like this when you tighten it you don't want to see any of that wire exposed at the top when you tighten it down you want to pull it in and then tighten it all the way down you want to hold it down you can see I'm pinching it with my two fingers okay 
so you don't see any wire really exposed at the top. It's buried beneath the screw head. That's exactly how you want it. This one right here, it's actually perfect. It's perfectly stripped. You can see just a little bit of wire exposed, no insulation trapped underneath. That's the way, that's the way you want it. All right, we've got an outlet up here. I've got a couple, you know, it's a dummy outlet. I got a couple wires in here. We've got six inches of ex of uh, insulation pulled back off of the Romex, exposing six inches of uh, of both uh, of all three uh, hot, neutral, and ground wires. So one would be coming in from the from the panel, and one maybe would be going out to the next outlet down the line. Okay, so. Um, we're going to wire this the old-fashioned way. We're just going to create J hooks on these. Okay, so now we're going to have the uh, we're going to have the the load on this side, right? Which is they're going to be the black wires, so they're going to be over here. Okay, I've also got. The white and the black, not that this is super important, but I've got the white and the black um, from the same line are going to be you know, at the top and the other one are going to be at the bottom just to keep it consistent. Again, as far as elec the electrical uh, wiring is concerned, it, it doesn't matter since it's all kind of tied in together, but I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of anal that way and that's how I'm going to keep it. Okay, we can also uh, tie in the grounds together. You can cap them and get a and do a dropper if you'd like. Some people might not want to cap the grounds. They might want to just twist them together, tie them in differently, but I capped them. Okay, so now you want to be able to push this all back in. And, you know, we're talking about wires tough, right? So you want to bend. Let me see if I can uh, turn this sideways a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So you want to bend them down and then up. Okay, the ground is inside, down and up. Essentially weaving them in, okay? There we go. Okay, and now you'll be able to screw these uh, the outlet in, and I like to just do a little at a time. Just get it to catch, get the bottom to catch, and you alternate. Screw it in a little bit, and then you go to the other side. Okay, now we didn't need to watch me uh, screw it all in, but we've got it all wired in. Now, um, you notice you, you don't see the uh, screw sticking out on the either side. That's because we, well, we screwed them all down completely, but sometimes you have an outlet where um, you're not using all four screws. If you're, that's the case and you're not using, say, the top screws, you definitely still want to screw them in because you don't want them anywhere near the exterior. You don't want them accidentally touching something. Maybe a wire pops off. Maybe um, you have the uh, box. You don't want to accidentally touch that or anything. So you always want the wire, the these things screwed in, regardless as to whether you're using them. So the other thing you can do is now you have. Um, I left it a little bit loose on the top, right? Because you then you then need to fit your your plate over it. So once you have uh, 
this thing aligned properly. You can test the, the plastic or the, the, the plastic plate cover that'll go over the top. You, once you have it in the right spot, pull the plate cover away and then you can tighten this thing down uh, permanently. When you're all done, you can flip the breaker back and you can get your tester and give it a shot and see if the little light comes on and or get that lamp that I spoke about in the beginning, a small lamp, plug it in, make sure it works. If it doesn't work, go back and flip the breaker off again and, and unscrew this, pull it out and see if you uh, miswired something. So that's it. Hopefully that gave you the confidence to rewire or replace an electrical outlet all by yourself. Just take your time, make sure you turn off the breaker before you touch anything. And um, if you have any questions, just uh, leave them down below in the comments. I appreciate you watching. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.